Hello and welcome to this presentation of quantum cascade lasers for the application of gas molecule detection in the spectral region of 10 to 17 microns of wavelength. So let's start by introducing QCLs, QCLs meaning quantum cascade lasers. So why are they interesting? Well, first and foremost, uh, they are interesting because they are one of the only sources in mid-infrared and long-wave infrared able to operate at room temperature in such a compact size. Um, and there are two main applications. The first one is defense, where QCLs are used to jam uh, the um, heat seeker of a missile that is uh, homing at the the engine of a airborne platform for for example here imagine this is a missile homing at the helicopter and if you shoot a laser from the helicopter on the detector on the infrared detector on the missile head then you can confuse it and jam it and the second application which is the topic of today's presentation is spectroscopy spectroscopy being the art of detecting molecules with uh, laser light. So this is based on the, the physics, the Beer-Lambert law, that says that uh, most gas molecules can be detected by shining a laser at the specific wavelength where the molecule is absorbing the radiation. So here, for example, you see that the benzene molecule can absorb radiation light at 673 centimeters minus one. And this is the absorption array of benzene. And this is precisely what uh, Meersense does in the 10 to 17 microns wavelength region, as we are able to manufacture a laser at specifically 674 70 centimeters minus one to detect benzene. So who is Meersense? Founded in 2015, Meersense is a French company that designs, manufactures, and sells quantum cascade laser solutions. For example, we hold, we hold the world's record of the longest wavelength for a CWQCL operating at room temperature, around 17 microns. And our strategy is an OEM strategy, meaning that we manufacture modules to be integrated in two systems. So today there are about 20 people in the company. Most of them uh, have PhDs. And here you can see the four top directors of MirSense, all physicists with deep knowledge about QCLs. So the CEO of MirSense, Dr. Carras, started his career at Thales, the French defense company, where our high power quantum cascade laser technology comes from. So Roland Tessier is the head of our 10 to 17 microns product line, and he has more than 20 years of experience working on QCLs at the University of Montpellier in southern France and at CNRS, the main R&D French Institute. So with this team uh, in Montpellier, they developed an alternative technology to, of QCLs to cover a broader spectral range that, than what is traditionally achievable with indium phosphide material. And this broader spectral range is the 10 to 17 microns range for spectroscopy that we are presenting today. So why are are our DFB lasers very effective for gas analysis? Well, first of all, we have a very wide range of wavelength available from 10 to 17 microns. And the central wavelength of our lasers can be precisely manufactured to hit right on that absorption band of the gas. This new spectral range is a new molecular fingerprint region available for our clients because up till now, QCLs couldn't really operate above 10 micron in CW at room temperature. The second main benefit is the very tight line width 
uh, of our lasers and this very tight line width is what drives the very high sensitivity that can be achieved with our quantum cascade lasers for example if you want to measure low ppb concentrations so this narrow line width allows clients to avoid measurement interferences the third benefit is the fact that our qcls are tunable and the tuning range is important for WMS, which is uh, Wavelength Modulation Spectroscopy. And our QCLs are typically tunable over a few wave numbers. Our lasers are also very stable, and that means that measurements will also be stable over time. Output power is several milliwatts at room temperature. And that is often enough for the absorption spectroscopy over a long path length of our clients. Our QCLs can be operated in a harsh environment, especially when the environmental temperature is hot, as the chip can operate at plus 45 degrees Celsius. The threshold current of our lasers is quite low, and that means they have a low amp consumption and that means our clients can integrate them in battery-operated portable gas analyzers. Finally, when clients want to integrate our QCLs in the cabinet, they like the fact that our QCLs have low impedance and so are, have a low sensitivity to ESG discharges. Now let's see what molecules can be detected with our QCLs. So first of all, there are, uh, we could start with the BTEX pollutants that are created by the oil and gas industry. So there is benzene, toluene, and also several xylenes. The, in process control, customers can also be interested in measuring hydrogen cyanide, uh, which is a highly poisonous gas. And uh, also the nuclear industry is also interested by these QCLs to measure, for example, methyl iodide to prevent uh, nuclear plant accidents, or also uranium hexafluoride for other purposes. So now let's take a closer look at technology and see why is our antimonide technology different. So you perhaps know the traditional quantum cascade laser technology based on indium phosphide. It's shown on the left diagram. So you have indium phosphide material. And in the middle, the active region is made of gallium indium arsenide and aluminium indium arsenide. Now, the technology we work on is uh, shown in the right diagram. And it's made of indium arsenide and aluminium antimonide. So uh, our antimonide technology to manufacture QCLs is patented and very few labs in the world manufacture QCLs with antimonide material. So we bring you a unique technology. This unique technology is totally under control. We control the whole chain of manufacturing from the design of the quantum cascade laser structures, the growth of the material with molecular beam epitaxy, MBE, to build the heterostructures of the quantum cascade lasers, and then the process of the devices inside the clean rooms and then the packaging of the devices on sub mounts and then inside HHL packages. So we fully master this technology in Montpellier and we can access longer wavelength range above 10 microns compared to traditional indium phosphide technology. So here is an overview of the production facilities that exist in the University of Montpellier. And these facilities are used by Mearsense. In 2014, new buildings were built with a clean room and a new molecular beam epitaxy equipment were purchased. 
So for spectroscopy, we have developed distributed feedback lasers with single mode emissions and milliwatt of output power at room temperature and tunability with temperature and current. We have uh, very low threshold current densities, which allow to operate the laser in CW. On the left, for example, you see a DFB laser at 14.9 microns, which is the absorption light of benzene. And we can target the absorption line of benzene with a 5 milliwatt output power at room temperature. On the right is another example at a shorter wavelength, this, this time 11.3 microns, for methyl iodide, which is used in the nuclear industry. And you see with that we have higher power. Usually the longer the wavelength, the shorter the power. This is currently our record wavelength, and we are currently close to 18 microns. And this is still a CW operated laser, single mode, up to 27 degrees Celsius. And you can see on the right from the emission spectrums in function of temperature that we have a very good single mode emission. And that's to say that our technology is very good for single mode emission with a strong rejection of the side modes. And this is a big advantage for spectroscopy. So this chart shows the maximum operating temperature as a function of the wavelength, CW, or pulsed. Our state-of-the-art development has proven continuous operation at high temperature up to 20 microns and in pulse mode up to 25 microns at temperatures that are reachable with Peltier cooling. And in continuous mode, the red curve shows an ambient temperature operation up to 18 microns and this is why we advocate for our 10 to 17 microns DFB CW product line. Our standard laser products are now available and these are lasers packaged inside the HHL housing with a collimated lens and a Peltier element inside that will regulate the temperature of the laser chip. The user can then sweep the wavelength by selecting the right parameters. In this example, uh, you can tune the wavelength by changing the temperature here from minus 5 to plus 15 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature of the QCL chip inside the HHL housing. Outside temperature is between plus 20 and plus 30 degrees Celsius and you can tune the lasers typically across one wave number by tuning the current. These lasers are provided with a collimated lens and a collimated beam with typical divergence of less than 10 millirad. And you can ask your MirSense representative for the data sheet of uh, our products. So now let's see how you can tune the wavelength of our QCLs by changing both the temperature and the current. As you can see here, as the operating temperature of the QCL changes, the laser achieves different spectral modes. Here you see the different spectral modes of the benzene laser at 674 centimeters minus one. And here you see the different spectral modes of another laser. With each spectral mode, you get a new wavelength. And once you have chosen the right chip temperature, then you can get a continuous tuning range that you can sweep by changing the current. So for the benzene laser, for example, when the chip is at 15 degrees Celsius, which is the red line here, then 
you can continuously sweep over one wave number along this red line. And this is doable because of the tight line width of the lasers. Typically, over a long integration time of seconds, the line width is inferior to 200 MHz. And if customers want to achieve high-resolution spectroscopy, and the line width needs to be inferior to a specific level with a given integration time, please tell your MirSense representative and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Now, regarding optical specs, our lasers here are collimated. And uh, you see that uh, the beam shape here, the beam profile is a function of uh, the distance. Typically, we have half width at half maximum of the beam, which is 2 millimeter at the output of the package and 8 millimeter at 1 meter. And overall, the full angle divergence is less than 10 millirad. So let's see now the success that our clients have achieved in measuring gas molecules. And by the way, our QCL technology is a finalist of the 2021 PRISM Awards in the Smart Sensing category. An outstanding result was achieved by the Gazera company and the University of Helsinki in Finland for the detection of benzene at 15 microns with a cantilever for photoacoustic spectroscopy. The benzene peak is uh, 674 centimeters minus one. And uh, this technique works very well and we get a limit of detection inferior to one ppb. In the Gazira publication, you see with the Allen deviation that the measurement is very stable on a very long time. On uh, more than one hour of measurement, we continue to win over the signal. And so this shows that our lasers are very stable on a very long time period, which is very good for spectroscopy applications. So here is an application example where we measure the absorption of different CO2 peaks at low pressure around 9 millibar. So it's a very simple experiment and uh, the current is constant and we change the temperature of the laser of the QCL chip slowly to go through the absorption lines of CO2. And we see the different absorption peaks of CO2. And if you zoom on this peak, for example, you see a good spectral width in the range of 100 to 200 megahertz, which is limited by the fact that the absorption ray of the gas grows larger at the low pressure conditions of this experiment. And this shows that the absorption is not limited by the laser line width, which is very narrow. And once again, a narrow line width means a big advantage for spectroscopy. Another application example is the spectroscopy of ethylene with a QPass system, photoacoustic spectroscopy with a quartz, and one of these quantum cascade lasers. The laser is sent inside a gas cell, and the absorption of the molecules create a sound wave that creates an excitation of a quartz fork. The excitation of the quartz fork is then proportional to the concentration of the molecule. You see that we get a very good linearity and a low limit of detection of about 60 ppb. In blue curve is the theory. It is the second deriv derivative of the, of the absorption spectrum and the red curve is, your, is the actual measurement of the spectrum with the system. So you see that what you get in reality is very close to the theory. So this is a good instrument. And 
all this shows that the QCLs are suitable for spectroscopy, that they are stable enough, they have a narrow line width, and you can modulate them for sensing experiment. So this is another example of a collaboration with a Paris University and uh, the Imperial College in London, where we supplied a CW laser at 17.2 microns for the spectroscopy of N2O. So this was the first time in the world that a high resolution spectroscopy of N2O was carried out at this wavelength. So in blue, is the spectrum that was acquired and in red is the theoretical spectrum according to the Hytron database. So you see that there is a very good adequation between the instrument results and what the theory says. I'd like to thank you for your time and if you have further questions please contact your MirSense representative or feel free to shoot me an email. We would be very happy to host you in France and look forward to doing business with you. Have a nice day.